I'm here today to convince you that we need a Group B strep vaccine, which is already underway. It's, it is under development and maybe will be, well, we hope so, will be licensed by 2026. In addition to the professional relationship I have with Group B strep, since it's the main focus of my research, I also have a personal relationship with it. Uh, I have an eight-year-old son, and I had GBS bacteriuria during pregnancy. Um, fortunately, uh, it was early detected, it was properly treated, and my son was born healthy and fine. Group B strep can colonize health adults, and when it's a woman and she gets pregnant, she can vertically transmit the bacteria to the newborn. So it is uh, um, one of the main agents of neonatal infections. And the current burden of GBS, almost 400,000 cases of invasive infections in a year, or in, this is worldwide, more than 90,000 neonatal deaths, more than 45,000 stillbirths, uh, around 40,000 children that survive the infection but keep long-term sequelae, and more than 500,000 premature births. So it's a huge burden, and most of this burden is uh, actually in low- and middle-income countries. This is a, a, a better scenario than if we compare what we had like 20, 30 years ago, because there is a way to prevent GBS neonatal infections. There is a protocol, which is the intrapartum antibiotic prophylaxis that can be uh, administered to pregnant women in the moment of uh, birth, of delivery, but it's not applied everywhere in the world. So in the US, uh, the intrapartum antibiotic prophylaxis is uh, a, a standard protocol in a few countries of Europe but in most of low and middle income countries, uh, we don't do that. In Brazil, we don't do that, for example. And that did exactly where we have the highest burden associated with GBS. On top of that, this uh, antibiotic, um, intrapartal antibiotic prophylaxis is not able to prevent all forms of GBS disease because GBS in newborns can cause three main forms of disease, uh, prenatal, onset, early onset, and late onset. So the intrapartum uh, antibiotic prophylaxis is effective on preventing the early onset syndrome, which is uh, when the bacteria is transmitted vertically from the mother to the, to, to the baby during birth, during delivery. But we know that GPS is able to cross uh, the placenta so this trans vertical transmission can happen even before birth. And this, is, this usually um, uh, causes the prenatal onset this syndrome associated with GBS. And this cannot be prevented by antibiotics. The same thing happens with the late onset because the late onset, usually the baby acquires the bacteria after birth. And this is also not prevented by the antibiotic prophylaxis. So, due to the huge burden associated with GBS, and also the problem that on, on intrapartum antibiotic prophylaxis, although very effective, led to, the, to a huge use of antibiotics in this population that is, who is already sensitive. So, pregnant women, mothers, uh, newborns have been exposed to antibiotics, of course, uh, preventing the, the infection that could be caused, but this has a cost. And we know that uh, although GBS as group A strep is uh, universally sense susceptible to penicillin still, the rates of resistance to erythromycin and clindamycin, which are alternative drugs used when uh, the, the patient is allergic to penicillin, are very high now. In the US, for example, in the most recent uh, report by CDC, almost half of GBS strains isolated from infection 
are resistant to either erythromycin and or clindamycin. So it has been uh, a, a problem and now it's a, a real threat in GBS, the problem of erythromycin and clindamycin resistance. That's why the most effective way would be a vaccine. And the vaccine, uh, has, which has been under development, as I said, the target of the vaccine are the uh, polysaccharide capsule of the bacteria. But GBS has 10 different capsules. And I don't know if you're all familiar with pneumococcus, which is another strep species. And the same uh, approach that, uh, that was used with pneumococcal vaccine is, is, has been used now with the group B strep vaccine. And we were not able to include all 10 capsule types in the vaccine that is under development. So up to six are being included, but they uh, represent the most common capsule types worldwide. But we also expect that maybe something similar, such as serotype switching that we observed with pneumococcal vaccine may happen with group B strep vaccine as well. Either way, the vaccine has been um, uh, determined as a priority by the World Health, World Health Organization as well. And it is included in the agenda of WHO to the, 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 with the aim of to defeat meningitis by 2030 because group B strep in newborns is maybe one of the main agents of meningitis and pneumonia. And I hope I have convinced you that we do have a vaccine, we do need a vaccine. And if you are interested in group B strep and all the, the most recent advances uh, regarding this uh, uh, bacterial species, uh, will be presented in the International Symposium of Streptococcus Galactic Disease, which is the global conference on this bacteria that will be held uh, this year in October in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. <laughs> so if you work with GBS, I invite you all to uh, visit our website. So <laughs> it's issad.org. Thank you. <laughs>